An emotional day in court for Amanda Knox, the American college student standing trial in Italy for the murder of her roommate. Her father, Kurt Knox, just visited with Amanda, and we will talk exclusively with him in just a moment. But first, NBC's Keith Miller is also in Perugia, Italy, with the latest details. Keith, good morning. Good morning, Meredith. Well, we are three months into this trial, and the prosecution has failed to introduce any evidence directly linking Amanda Knox and her former boyfriend to the crime of murder. Despite more than a year behind bars awaiting justice, Amanda Knox appeared in court confident, relaxed. Italian reporters describe her behavior as breezy. But on Thursday, Knox turned somber when prosecutors played a police video of the crime scene. Knox covered her eyes when pictures revealed a blood-stained bedroom and the body of Meredith Kircher, the British exchange student who shared the house with Knox. A police forensic scientist testified that a bloody footprint was compatible with Rafael Solicito, Knox's former boyfriend. Under cross-examination, police said the footprint could also belong to Rudy Guedi. He was convicted of murdering Kircher in a previous trial. Police also identified a bloody handprint as Guedi's. Court reporters were asking each other, where's the evidence against Knox? Maybe they're saving the, last, the best for the last because they know that what happens at the beginning of the trial is so far back that uh, people might not uh, remember it. Jurors won't forget their visit to the crime scene over last weekend. The house where Kircher was murdered has been ransacked. It has been broken into several times, once used reportedly for satanic rituals. Back in court, a forensic scientist testified it appears as if someone tried to strangle Kircher before her throat was slit. The prosecution contends that it was Knox who used the knife while Solacito held the victim down. The defendants maintain they are innocent. The evidence so far appears weak, but the prosecutors are not talking to journalists. So, in fact, they could be holding some sort of bombshell, which they will release in the coming months of this trial. Meredith? Keith Miller, thank you. Kurt Knox, Amanda's father, is also in Perugia. He just came from visiting his daughter in jail and is with us exclusively. Mr. Knox, good morning to you. Good morning. As I just said, you came from visiting your daughter just a few minutes ago. How is she doing? Uh, she's hanging in there. Uh, she's seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and is actually getting anxious to testify and, you know, get her word in court that she is 100% innocent of this horrific crime. Can you share with me anything specifically that she said to you this morning? Well, we didn't really speak a whole bunch about uh, the actual court case at this stage of the game. We were just kind of, you know, what was happening with the families and stuff like that so she can kind of keep up to speed with what's happening in Seattle. Yesterday was a particularly diff difficult day at the trial. The prosecution showed rather gruesome video of Meredith's body at the crime scene. Your daughter actually looked away at that point. You were also watching. How hard was that for you, knowing that your daughter has been charged with this crime? Well, you know, I, I personally have actually seen the crime scene video a number of times, and it's difficult any time you look at it. But in, a, in Amanda's case, uh, you know, this was her friend that was murdered, and her ability to look at that just isn't there. And, you know, once again, we try to do whatever we can to support her. The prosecution, this trial has been going on since January, and the prosecution has just begun to present its forensic evidence. So far, no smoking gun. As Keith pointed out in his piece, court reporters are asking each other, where is the evidence against Amanda? So every day, are you feeling more confident that she will be exonerated, or are you waiting for the other shoe to drop? Uh, frankly, as the trial unfolds, I'm getting more and more confident because when we get into the forensic evidence, they, they virtually have nothing. So they've tried a character assassination at the front end of this trial, and uh, I see it, you know, looking better and better as we move along. You know, you talk about character assassination. They have portrayed uh, the prosecution and some members of the media have portrayed your daughter as a sort of a crazed party girl capable of this kind of heinous crime. Obviously, you disagree with that, but is it possible there is a side of your daughter that you knew nothing about? Absolutely not. I mean, how she's being portrayed is 180 degrees different than 
and who she truly is. And if you ask any of her friends or anybody who's gotten to know her, they'll tell you the same story that I do. Uh, and she is a, an extremely good kid. I know you were worried before the trial about whether she would get a fair trial. At this point, so far, do you think that she is getting one? Um, I believe so. I think the uh, lead judge is really trying to get to the bottom of things, and there was something that took place last Saturday where the court actually went and visited uh, her old house, and it was uh, pleasing to me to have them actually see the site, go around, go into the rooms to get a, an aspect of what the space allocation was and the fact that four people in that room in a, you know, a horrific situation and yet there's no DNA or anything like that. I wanted and I'm glad that the court actually saw that. You know, Kurt, uh, you said that as a family you do what you have to do, but as a dad this has got to be devastating for you. Yeah, uh, it's it's devastating for anybody involved in the family. I mean, it's not just me. It's it's one where we're we're doing everything we can to support her and we're going to bring her home. All right, Kurt Knox, thank you so much for your time this morning. All right, thanks for having me.